this is the second week. Last Sunday was the second week of our series, Living yes. Faith. Uh -huh. And we have a guest speaker, Pastor Billy Lyle. Yeah. I don't know about yes. you. I just wanted to encourage you. If you were not there last Sunday, mm -hmm. please go to our YouTube channel. Watch that preaching. Mm -hmm. It felt like for me that God was, <laughs> he is a God sent yeah. for us to be able to hear his message, you know, coming from Pastor Billy for our spiritual family. Yeah, I don't know about you, powerful. just great and powerful message from Pastor Billy. And of course, he loved our book study on James, which is, you know, living faith. Again, just like what we have said, it's active, it's alive, it's not dead, it's not passive, but it's living. And that's what James is encouraging us, you know, mm -hmm. as you read this book of, of course, the book of James. So please, today we will continue with that, a famous verse you know, famous text and what Pastor Billy uh, discussed last Sunday. And please open your Bible. But if you don't have a Bible with you, it will be there on the screen. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Mm -hmm. And let's start. And here's how it reads. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops, develops perseverance Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. All right. I don't know about you. So uh, Jane said that love the message. Perseverance is my word from God this, this year. year. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. So I don't know about you, but maybe you are, you know, you've seen this uh, car sticker or bumper sticker be, that reads, when life hands you a lemon, make a lemonade. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that bumper sticker before? I've yeah. read that. Yeah. Huh? When... Life hands you a lemon, make a lemonade. To be honest, of course, it is easier to read that than actually when you're experiencing that, Jen. You know, you know what it is. When things, you know, gets difficult, it's so, I don't know, but it's just so difficult, I think, for me to think that I could make a lemonade out of it. But yet, for me, as you know, when you read that statement of you've seen that statement, um, it's difficult to practice that. The reality is, because we don't want to go through trials. We don't want to go through difficulty. But I think th that statement has some biblical tone into that, to be honest. Why? Because again, throughout the Bible, when you read it, what you would read is that stories of people, because of God, turn defeat into victory. Mm -hmm. Because of God. Mm -hmm. Many, 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 many people you know, that God had used, not only that, turn trials into triumph. Triumphs. Okay. Yeah, triumphs in their lives. So, and again, you know, instead of them being victims, they became victors. Mm -hmm. So you could see that from the story of, you know, uh, David, from the story of Joseph, from the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, from the story of Daniel being in the lion's den. You know, all of those, uh, they were handed a lemon, but yet God changed it. it. It was not them who turned it into a lemonade, but it was God. It was God is because God was with them. So James is encouraging the believer, I believe, as we read this, because they were what, experiencing persecution. They were experiencing challenges and difficulties in life. Yet, as you read this, I believe that James is also challenging us to experience the same today. And as we read this in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. And here's how it reads. And let me just point several things here. Number one is that when you read the verse in verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kind. So the word after that is count it all joy. So it's very interesting because the word count or consider, actually the original in Hebrew was the word count. Actually, it is a financial terminology. It's a financial term. And it means to evaluate. So what James was saying here, as you read that with that, uh, with that understanding now, is when you read this text, evaluate it, okay? Evaluate your life, evaluate. To evaluate, when James says to count it all joy, or to consider, he encourages his readers to evaluate the look, the way they look at trials. Mm -hmm. So he says, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. So James was challenging them, evaluate. But that means count, evaluate. So as you look at this, James is challenging them to develop a new what perspective and a new attitude. That's why evaluate, you know, reflect upon this whenever you face trials. Because why is he saying this? Because again, uh, he wanted us to have a different perspective. Because what is the what is the perspective when we're having trials? 
is that it's painful, of course, it's difficult. You know, sometimes we feel like God is not with us, that God has abandoned us. Mm -hmm. We feel like when we go through trials is that, you know, that everything is already maybe lost and we may not have hope mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But yet, James was saying, evaluate. Have a different perspective. He's challenging us to think differently when we face trials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So that's why he says, when you face trials of many kinds. So what he was saying here is that, Here's not only that you evaluate, but also to present to you, <coughs> excuse me, that the reality is that we will face trials. Mm -hmm. Christians, if you're a believer, you, you must expect trials. Trials is what? It's part of life. We should not be, what? We should not be caught off guard when trials come upon our lives. James was saying, no, when you're experiencing trials or you will experience trials, that you should not be caught off guard. You should not be surprised. Oh, why am I having this? Okay, because trials are part of the Christian experience. That's why, as beautifully expressed by Pastor Billy Lyle last Sunday, is that when he mentioned in John 16, 33, that in this world, you will have trouble. Jesus said that to his disciples. Mm -hmm. So that means the encouragement from James, as you read, is that consider, evaluate, reflect, have a different perspective, have a different attitude because you should expect trials because trials is part of life. It's not like when it comes and when God allows it in our lives, instead of a approaching or having a, a view of negativity, then there's something that God is teaching us because he allows this in our lives. And that's why when you continue reading, and I want to focus on this, Trials of many kinds, of course. That means there are many kinds of trials that's going to come in our way. Trials of various kinds. What are, example, financial, you know, challenges, relational. Come on now. Some of the trials that you're going to face. Health. Health mm -hmm. Issues. That's part of trials. That's part of many kinds, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I think there's a lot more. But these are the three major Things that we experience, relational, that means uh, trials and challenges with people, financial, finances, because it's important, mm -hmm. as you would see, and also health issues. Some of us are sick, or some of us have um, family members that are not well, mm -hmm. and you are feeling that, and because you're going through these many trials that James was talking about. But yet, here's where I want to focus, Jen. And I believe that, you know, Pastor Billy already preached a great sermon about this, but yet here's where I want to focus this, this, this evening. Is that on, when he mentioned about this, consider it pure joy. Count it all joy. Somehow, uh, you know, James was teaching us here something different. Having not just the right perspective, but the right attitude. Mm -hmm. hmm, interesting. Consider is having the right perspective, but... You know, pure joy or having joy is having the right attitude. Mm -hmm. So let's differentiate first, Jen, because there's a difference between joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. The text didn't say consider it pure happiness. It didn't say count it all happiness, but all joy. There are two different emotions, mm -hmm. but yet somehow it's kind of like similar, but actually very different. And let me explain that to you because the God's goal is not for us to be happy, okay, but to have the joy that comes from Him. So here's what it is. Joy is attributed to something that's very consistent and it's internal. Keyword, when you talk about joy, very consistent, it is consistent and inter, inter, in, internal. So there's something from the inside, okay? So I'm just gonna like, <laughs> internal. <laughs> While well, happiness tends to be triggered by external factors, but yet also sometimes it's not consistent. It comes and goes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we feel happy, okay, when we receive something like a gift, right? When someone gives you a gift, and especially it's a gift that you like, you feel ha happy. Because again, not only that, something like when you receive awards or honors, you know, when you were young or even now, you were the employee of the month and all of that. So... These things are external or belong to the surface of our lives. And I haven't you noticed that happiness is kind of like it's here today and tomorrow will not be there because again, external, it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. But yet, here's what it is. Joy, on the other hand, is something deeper. 
Trials are difficult and painful, of course. But for example, here's what happened. Joy is that we feel joy when we worship God. Mm -hmm. We feel joy when we are in the presence of God. So that's something internal that God does in our soul. Okay? That's why for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Internal. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Have you noticed the happiness or being happy is not a fruit of the Spirit? <laughs> because it's externally based. Trials, not an occasion for joy. Most of the time, of course, trials are difficult and painful, but they exist for a purpose. So, Jen, if the if God's purpose for us, one of the purposes of going through trials and difficulty is for us to what? To consider it as joy, it, to experience joy. The question is this, how can we evaluate and consider trials or as pure joy or all joy? Mm -hmm. How can we? Because again, I know what you're thinking. Pastor, come on. Trials are joy? Because your perspective is happiness. It's not. It's the work internally that God does in us to produce the fruit of the Spirit. So that's what I want to focus on this evening. I want to answer that question today. How can we consider this trials as pure joy and all joy? So let me read some of your comments here before we continue. Jen, you want to read that? Yes, Glendale said, Trials come to us for us to learn something in that God is teaching us to build our relationship with Him, trusting that He knows what He is doing and that He has better plans for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I agree with that. And I think that's why this attitude is very important mm -hmm. because this attitude also, it comes from a different, a right perspective that reflects the right attitude. And this, is, this attitude that I'm speaking of is joy, mm -hmm. not happiness. So here's the reason why you could have joy, okay? Pure joy, all joy, when you experience trials and challenges. All right, so a little bit more. Yeah, I love, I love this. Uh, Jane said, happiness is temporary. Joy can be experienced for a lifetime and regardless of circumstances. Amen, yeah. amen. It's consistent regardless of the circumstance. But happiness, temporary. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now, here's the reason. Having that mindset now. So uh, what we're we pursuing here? Joy instead of, of happiness. happiness. Mm -hmm. Joy in the midst of trials. Joy in the midst of many trials, according to James. Mm -hmm. How can we possess that? Mm -hmm. Let me share to you three things. For us to be able to have the right perspective and right attitude, praying God that, Lord, that God, we will develop joy as we look, you know, go through trials and challenges. Here's the first one. God allows trials in our lives as a test to prove our faith. That means belief and trust in Him. Almost, almost similar to what Glendale yeah, said. said. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're on point, Glendale. But yet, God allows trials in our life as a test. Where is that? Let's start reading on verse 2 and 3. Consider it pure joy. Again, you can see that. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because... So I, that means because, cause and effect, right? You know that the testing of your faith... Ah, oh, wow... So that means when God allows trials in our lives, it's a test to prove. It's a testing of our faith. Mm. So why is this something that we should be joyful about? Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, come on. I mean, like, God is testing me. So what, 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 what's going on? Because it's to prove, according to, let's put that on the screen again, to prove our faith. It's not to approve of us because, again, you've already been approved because Jesus Christ died for you. But to prove, that means our, belief, our faith, belief, and trust in Him. Mm -hmm. Not This is not about approval, but uh -huh. proving. Oh, right. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Approval is I have to, to go through this for God to approve of me just to prove, just to approve if He loves me or not or something that I would do to... To gain God's approval. But no, you've already been chosen by God. This is to prove our faith. What do you mean by that? Because according to this text, as we go back to this, because the testing of our faith, because God allows trials to test our faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So very important. So trials confirms our faith then. The word testing here is the word proving. So that means trials is a test to prove our faith. So that means, here's what it is. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but growing, uh, maybe when you were in high school or how many of you here when you were in high school or grade school, do you love tests? No. You do love tests, Jen? No. But you are cum laude when you graduated college. But does it mean I like the tests? <laughs> okay, all right. So <laughs> how many of you here, you're watching, you love exams? I don't. But guess what? But we still take it. Yeah, the the weird part of it is that as you take the test and that you you're you're you know you you know the right answers or you know you're passing the test you're happy about it. Mm -hmm. but when you know you're failing. You're, it's not <laughs> exactly. It's but again, the word is happy. Uh -huh. But yet this one is different. Let's go back to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham was asked by God to offer his son. Mm -hmm. Is that to approve of God's favor in his life? No, to prove his faith. Mm -hmm. What is about proving our faith? Remember, God is all all-knowing God. God already knows mm -hmm. who Abraham is, is. But we need to know. Abraham needs to know. Mm -hmm. That's why God allowed that test and trials is for them for him to be able to prove. That means for him to be able to act upon the faith that he professed that he would follow God regardless. Yeah. Wow. So that means for us, you may say that, you know, faith is you believe God, you trust God, that you would do everything for the Lord. How many of you made that prayer before? Mm -hmm. But yet, it's during the testing and the trials that that is proved either right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Because during trials and testing, you are given a choice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. So that's why God allows this for the simple reason of the testing of our faith. What? To prove our faith, belief, and trust in Him. So when we were being, when our faith is being tested, that means our belief and trust in God is being tested. Mm -hmm. Do we truly believe Him? Mm -hmm. Because it's so easy to say that we believe God. Yeah. It's so easy that we say to say that Lord, I will do everything for you until God tests us, until God puts you in a position to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Until then. Your heart will be revealed. Mm -hmm. That's why, look at this in First Peter. And this is beautiful. And here's what he said. So be truly glad. And again, that word joy. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Interesting about Peter. There is a wonderful joy. Not happiness. Joy. Why? These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Mm -hmm. Wow. The trials will show that your faith is genuine. Mm -hmm. The things that you profess, the things that you say, the things that's being sure and faith that being sure and hope, uh, being sure and certain of what things we do not for. see, and what we hope for, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. Continuing in verse 7, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Mm -hmm. So our, our faith is being tested to prove if it is genuine or not. What is genuineness? That means if it is real or fake. Mm -hmm. So it is possible sometimes that our faith is just a lip service, right. but not really true. So this is something that we rejoice about because as we go through this testing, you could rejoice and say, God, thank you. This is something that is what? Not temporary, something eternal because I know, because I went through this, God, that I've really understood more about you mm -hmm. because I have seen indeed through the trials where my faith lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comment on that? Yeah, I, I like what you said because... You know, without trials, then the faith is all a profession of faith. But there is no, um, you know, the action. Faith without works action is dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so which means it has to be, the, your faith has to be shown in, in action. And for you to see if you truly have faith is when you go through the trials. Because that's the only way. You're gonna, I love what you're saying. You're given a choice. That's the only time you're given a choice. Without trials, it's so easy to say that you have faith without it, right? But then when the trials come, that's the, that's the only time you could truly say for yourself, 
that I truly trust and believe in God. Mm -hmm. You know. For example, Jen, great, great um, summary on that. For example, when we talk about provision and trusting God as God as the provider, we say that all a, a lot of times. Oh, God will provide. Yeah. God will. How many of you know this? That the Job and Jared, God will provide was the time when Abraham was tested with Isaac. Mm. And then he coined that and he said he understood who God is. God is my provider. Because at that very moment, there is a choice to trust God that he would provide for him a son, even though he would kill his son. Mm -hmm. So that means it's so easy to say that God will provide until you are given a choice to really put that into test. What, how do you put that into test? To give what belongs to the Lord. When God speaks to you to bless someone, do you act in faith? Mm -hmm. Because if not, then right. it's a lip service. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, when you go to trials now, when it comes to finances, mm -hmm. then the question is, we have to consider. So, Lord, this finance trials or testing in my finances, I have to consider, count it according, evaluate. So, so I, go to, I need not to be shocked. But as I make this decision now, Lord, you're proving my faith if it is real. So when I go through this, will I trust you with my finances as I continue forward or not? Mm -hmm. Or we'll talk about relationships. So it's difficult to forgive. Right. When someone hurts you, someone maligns you, but now that's where the testing comes. Mm -hmm. Because now you are given a choice to forgive or not to forgive because someone hurt you. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do then? you would see where your heart is as your faith is being tested. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. And also just to, you know, in that, in that regard, just to, to see whether you really trust that God would vindicate you, yes. that God would fight for you, Amen. you know, God would provide for you, you know, because usually it's more, the, the tension is there. And when you sense that tension, the choice is always, we always have a free will. We have a choice whether we would exercise our faith. Our God has already given us faith. The point is, are we going to exercise our faith or not? <laughs> That's what it is. Exactly. A choice to forgive, according to Jackie, who's watching right now. A choice to forgive. A choice to give. A choice always. Mm -hmm. Let me just read some few things here from Glendale. Sanders diagnosis came in 2019. And our response was, Lord, how can we be better? How can we better ourselves to help this wonderful boy you have entrusted us? Not why, Lord. Not why. Not why us. We are still trusting His timetable and purpose in our son's life and in our life. Amen. And as you trust God, and then, and I believe it's going to go, what you have shared is going to go to my point too. Uh -huh. All right? Yeah. So I just don't want to comment right now because it's going to go, I'm going to go piggyback on that. Okay, Jesse said, trials in life will reveal where your faith lies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really. It is, is my faith, uh, 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 lies in my finances or in God that God who provides okay. is my faith lies in you know my my heart to exact revenge on people or to trust his word that he will vindicate me mm -hmm. that's where it is yeah okay honey says uh, in times of trial in, in, it's the time our faith is revealed to us yes yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I hope you're getting that. So I know some of you are processing this and great. Mm -hmm. But here's, it's possible to consider, you know, to, for us to be able to have joy when we have the perspective and the right attitude of joy. Because when we see this as Lord, yes, there's joy that is constant, that is internal. And according to Jane, and let me just read what she said here, is joy that is what? Regardless of it's an experience of a lifetime, regardless of the circumstance, because as there's what this joy, Lord, you're testing my faith. You're proving, you know, for me, for me to be able to know my belief and trust is really in you or into something else or someone else. Mm -hmm. so, Christia says here, trials reveal where my heart really belongs. Yes, it, beautiful. Yeah, it shows me who my God really is. When I have nothing, do I still choose to wait on God? Or grab the offer of the enemy. There you go. So that's what it is. So that's why it's very important. All right. Here's the next one, which mm -hmm. is, you know, kind of like connected to uh, what Glendale said. Said actually, Glendale is almost pretty much unpacking my, yeah. my 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 <laughs> preaching this evening. All right. So here's the next one. The testing of our faith through trials produces perseverance. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting, because when you read some other translation, it's the word patience. And but yet the word perseverance there and patience is this, steadfastness and endurance. That's actually the original Greek word. That's why I put a dash there. Steadfastness. You're steadfast. You're not moved. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're constant. And endurance. 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 All right? So let's look at this. Look at this. Consider pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops mm -hmm. perseverance. Mm -hmm. So the testing of our faith not only proves, yeah. reveals really our faith, but also it develops. It's connected to each other. As your faith is being revealed, it has a purpose to develop perseverance and to develop patience. Mm -hmm. And what is that? The noun perseverance in that text, as I, you know, use my knowledge in um, apps on Greek and studying this, means steadfastness and endurance in the, in the face of difficulties. What do you mean this? What do you mean by this, rather? Trials are like tra uh, training challenges for an athlete. Mm -hmm. They build physical endurance and stamina. Mm -hmm. Ah, so that means when you are an athlete, you train. Why are you being trained? Because they wanted to build your endurance. You wanted to build your stamina. So that what? So that you would be stronger. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So that means develop perseverance is that so that you develop two things. Steadfastness and endurance. What is that? So that you'll be stronger. Mm -hmm. So that means so that when the next storm comes, you'll be stronger. Mm -hmm. So there is a purpose. Why do you think that when you're a basketball player, you practice? When you're an athlete, you do trainings. Remember when we were doing the boxing and we were exercising? There's something that's being developed so that you're not going to quit easily. Endurance. Mm -hmm. Because some people just quit when yeah. they go through difficulty because you feel the pain. Yeah. But if you're not used to the pain, you quit. That's why the motor in the gym, no pain, no gain. Because when you experience the pain... That means when you experience it during the actual game, you're familiar and you don't quit. Mm -hmm. Exactly with what develops perseverance, that steadfastness and endurance. Mm -hmm. James uses the concept of this. Two key words here is for what? To describe the ability to trust God mm -hmm. more and more. So because when you feel that, when you go through the trials of you know, relationship or finances or, you know, health issues and God heals you, then you begin to trust God more. You begin to hold on to his word more. So you're developing that, what? Perseverance. Mm -hmm. The steadfastness that you're not quitting mm -hmm. because of what's happening in your life. Yeah. Because you're saying, oh, I've felt this before. Lord, thank you. Because it, it builds, okay? It builds me up. Comment on that? That's why we oh, um, so read something. comments okay. right here. So I, I know. I love it. People go, are go, go. engaged. I now, like that you're engaged. Uh -huh. Mommy LB says, we should have faith in every trial for the purpose of purifying and strengthening us. Yes. Uh -huh. Exactly what it is. Proving a while ago is purifying. This one, the point two, is strengthening. Uh -huh. There you go. You got it, Mommy LB. On yeah, point. That's good. Um, honey says, accepting life uh, trials and testings allow us Allows God to work in us. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. I got that also from uh, Pastor Billy. Um, Jane says, Trials show how we truly see God. We can say God is our provider, protector, and all-powerful. But when the trials come, do we really believe God is going to provide, protect, and strengthen? During this test, God not only reveals how we see Him, but He also reveals to us who he truly is. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Great. Great, Great comment. Great insight. And the Lord has said, I'm watching with my co-workers here at work. Hello, hey, guys. Well, hello, guys. Hello. Wherever you are. I don't know each and every one of you, but thank you for thank joining you us for today. Joining. Uh -huh. So let, let me go. So the first one was proving the purifying of our faith. So that we'll know what really reveals who were our, our faith, faith lies. Right. Uh -huh. The second one is this. It's also developing mm -hmm. that strengthening us. Yeah. You know, it's like a muscle. Yeah. You know, as you go through this, you become stronger mm -hmm. because it develops that perseverance in you. I remember mm -hmm. uh, when we started running, you know, treadmill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were running in the treadmill. I was like, I, w I felt like, you know, in, in five minutes of being on the treadmill when I first started, I was like, oh no, I don't think I'm going to last. I don't think I'm going to last. And then so, you know, I started, you know, very small number of minutes, but then... When I got back 
in the treadmill again the following day or was it every other day? Every other day. Uh, every other day. Mm -hmm. um, got back in again. I just said, okay, just add a minute more. Just add a minute more. So I just kept on adding and adding and adding. And it, it really did develop, yep. you know, perseverance. And even the mental state. The mindset changes. Because yeah. it's like, oh, this is so hard, you know, while you're at the treadmill. It's like, oh, this is so hard. I, I want to quit. I want to stop now. I can't take it anymore. But then you just say, no, one more minute, one more minute. And so... As that progresses, you know, it, it, it develops, you know, uh, the endurance and the perseverance in you. And if that is true in the physical sense, I think that's... Very that's what true. James yeah. actually is saying. That's very true in the very spiritual Very true in the sense. spiritual aspect. You know why? It's because you should go through it, then you become more. You're not going to quit. Uh, Quickly quit. quit. Yeah. Quit easily mm -hmm. and just give up. That's exactly because why? Because according to James, there are many more that is to come. Yeah. Consider pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Yeah. So that means it's part of life. Yeah. So the people that quit in their walk with the Lord, that quit in their relationship with God, are people that have not really, what, developed perseverance. Yeah. Because when, when you experience the pain and, you know, the testing of the faith, normally what we do is we complain and we just quit then the perseverance doesn't develop in us. There's yeah. no perseverance. And sometimes the people that have not, that's why you haven't you noticed the people, even in a physical sense, the people that have went through challenges in life, when they become successful, their perspective in life is quite different yeah. than those who are being shielded by, yeah. you know, you know, I would say comfort. Yeah. by comfort. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. Look at Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Here's at the very end of that chapter, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, remain strong in the faith. Wow. Mm -hmm. Remain strong. Don't let anyone move you. Anything. Don't let anything, rather, move you. Always give yourselves completely to the work of the Lord because you belong to the Lord and you know that your work is not worthless. worthless. Mm -hmm. So that means be immovable. The only way you're going to remain strong is that not letting anyone move you or anything move you is that when you continue to endure, when you continue to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. very good. Good? Yeah. So that's Kat, okay? Ka Kathleen, Kathleen May says, This topic is very eye-opening for me. My usual response to trials is to trying to fix the problem. But it is really an opportunity to exercise and grow my faith muscles through praying and asking God what He is trying to teach me. There you go. Perfect. Wow. Because that's why James was saying, consider. Okay, evaluate this. Mm -hmm. And here's the last. Do you think this is over? And here's the last one. Mm -hmm. So why would it consider pure joy, Jen? Mm -hmm. Not only is it because, again, the testing. The first one is that, you know, uh, uh, God allows trials in our lives to test or prove our faith and trust in Him. Number two is that the testing of our faith through trials produces perseverance. That is steadfastness and endurance. And here's the last one. Because at the end of the day, God's goal for our lives is maturity. Mm. That is the goal. Yeah. The goal is maturity. On point, cat. On point, cat. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Seems like everyone is watching today twice from Glendale and now one from cat. Uh -huh. You are on point because yeah. the goal is to mature us. Let me put the text first and let's explain this because sometimes we have a different perspective of what maturity is. Uh -huh. Let's put it there. Because perseverance must finish its work. So that means that perseverance has a work, mm -hmm. has to accomplish something. And what is that? So that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time we see trials in a negative light. We consider the hard times as God's curse upon us for some or his punishment for us mm -hmm. rather than we what they really are. Here's what maturity is. Well, opportunities to joyfully mature in Christ likeness. Mm -hmm. Maturity is what? Maturing into Christ likeness. Because that's the goal of God to conform us. Sanctification is conforming us into the likeness of Jesus. So when you see the first point as purifying, the second one is strengthening, the third is sanctifying. Mm -hmm. What is sanctifying? To mature us into Christ's likeness. God wants us to be spiritually mature, right? Why it would be a tra tragedy if our children re remain like little babies. To imagine if you're, you know, have kids who are 25 years old and they act like still three or five years old. So, but they are perfectly functioning adults, mm -hmm. okay? 
That means many Christians shelter themselves from trials or of life. As, as a result, here's what happens. When we shelter ourselves from the trials of life, we never grow up. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people, and I'm, I don't know if that's you, it's between you and God. I'm not here to you know, judge, judge you and anything, but here's what I've noticed for being a pastor for quite some time. Many, some people, they're still in the church. They are in church. They've been a Christian for quite some time, but they have never grown up. They have not matured. Because why? Because they have shielded themselves from trials. Their prayer is always, Lord, take this trial away. Remove this trial away. Lord, you know, but instead of, Lord, let me persevere so that your work will happen so that I'll become more Christ. Yeah. I think that should be the prayer. Instead of, Lord, remove this. Lord, you know, re I rebuke this trial, Lord. No, no, no. When God allows it, that means it has a purpose. Yeah. And, and here's where joy comes. Because as we have the right perspective and the right attitude of joy, is this. Our prayer is, Lord, let me persevere and not quit. Mm -hmm. But yet, hold me, guide me, strengthen me, Lord, so that I persevere and be steadfast on this, so that you work. So whatever you want. It's like what Kathleen said, right? Mm -hmm. Praying that what he's trying to teach, teach me, me. An opportunity to ex and grow my faith. Lord, teach me so that my faith will grow so that I'll be more like your son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what trials is all about. Mm -hmm. yeah. God must work in us before he could work through us. Mm -hmm. And I got this from W. Wiersbe in one of the commentaries. Mm -hmm. Here's what he said. He must work in us before he could work through us. Imagine this, God spent 25 years working in Abraham's life, mm -hmm. 25, 75 when he called him, 99 when he promised the child, and about that 25 years before the fruition of the promise, working in him so that God could work through him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Abraham, what? 25 years, 75 to 100 because the promised son came. And you're thinking, why wait that long? Because God has to work in him. Mm. 25 years. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it's hard. Mm. That's why when something about it, you could see the proving of the faith was when he was offering his son. You know, not only that, the, the, not, not only the proving, but also the strengthening that happened all throughout his life. As you could see, the journey of Abraham, he was a liar from the very beginning. And then until he began to continually trust the Lord, it took. 25 years. Mm -hmm. Here's another example. Joseph. Mm -hmm. 13 years. Mm -hmm. Putting him in various testing of many kinds. Mm -hmm. From the pit, to the prison, to the palace. 13 years before he was put as the second in command in Egypt. Mm -hmm. He spent 8 years preparing Moses for 40 years of service. 8 years. And our Jesus Christ took three years training his disciples, building their character before they got released. Mm -hmm. See? Mature and complete. Maturity there is being Christ-like. Mm -hmm. The work of God in us so that he could what, work through us. Mm -hmm. Comment on that. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love what you're saying because there's just, you know, a lot of things that Sometimes when we're thinking, Lord, okay, maybe it's the enemy that's doing this, you know, and, and or um, even unanswered prayer sometimes could be like, Lord, why is this happening? Why are you not answering my prayers? It could be a trial for you, just the mere fact that God is silent, uh, you know. But, you know, I like what you said. When God allows these things to happen in our lives, it means there's a purpose for it because yeah. He's a purposeful God. God and, and and nothing escapes His hand, which means even what the enemy is trying to do to Man destroy you, yeah. God is still there to use that for your and for your benefit, so that that maturity will be developed in you. So rather than despise, you know, despise the trials, the testings of our faith. I think I like what you what you're getting at is that if we understand the purpose of why God is doing this. And who our God is, that He is a loving God and He wants to make us mature, um, more like His Son, 
then we will not run away from trials. Mm -hmm. But rather, when trials come, not that we're going to ask for it, you know, <laughs> like, like, come on, more trials. No, not really, not going to pray that prayer. But it's really more when it comes, then we could say, Lord, I will not complain, but I would want to, uh, to learn what you're trying to do in me or allow you to do your work in me so that I would be, so that my faith will grow and so that I will be more like your son, Jesus Christ. I agree with you 100%, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to go tweak a bit mm -hmm. because when we go through trials and difficulties and challenges, what you said is, yes, understanding his purpose, but yet so many times you only understand his purpose afterwards. afterwards. Mm -hmm. So going through the trials is not just, just he, listen to me now, because some of us quit. It's because we're trying to understand God's purpose in the middle of the trial. Because most of the time you would not. Mm. But here's what you need to have. Not to understand God's purpose, yes. but understand who he is. Yes. Because understanding who he is at the very end makes you understand his purpose. Mm -hmm. That's why before, when I'm going through challenges, Lord, what are, you, what are you trying to teach me? So, of course, I'm praying that. But yet, most of the time, it's only after that I would understand. Yeah. That's why Joseph said that at the very end of yeah. his, with his brother. Yeah. What you meant you know, to harm me, but yet God used me for the saving of the generations. Yeah. But at that moment, he was not. He's bitter. Yes. He was, yeah. you know? but, but the working, that's why... I think my prayer has always been now when, when I go through this is that, Lord, I may not understand the purpose later that I would do, but Lord, help me, God, at this per particular moment in my life to persevere, to hold on, to trust you more, your character, who you are. Because if really that you're got a purpose, then there is going to be a purpose at the very end. But let me trust your word and trust you mm -hmm. as I go through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And allow him to work. In yes. You. And just yes, do your work. As I continue to trust you. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. God could continue to work in you. But you're like, I don't like this God. Exactly. You, know, you just keep on complaining rather than saying, Lord, I don't know why this is happening. But I know you're doing a work in my life. So do have your way. Do your work. Yes. That's why sometimes, that's why it, sometimes it would take long. Is because we have not We're trusted delaying. God. Yeah. We're delaying it. Mm -hmm. Look at 13 years for Joseph, 25 years for Abraham. Because again, even in Abraham's journey, when he was in a bind, he was he would lie. Right. Mm -hmm. He would, you know. But he that's would lie why. about his wife. Why? Crying out loud. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the proving of the faith. Uh -huh. At the very end, that was the greatest test was to offer his son. Because at that very moment, that's the revealing mm -hmm. of really where, he, where his faith lies. Mm -hmm. Let me just read some of you here. There's a lot of stuff here. Okay, let's read one from Honey. Okay, go ahead. Just want to share, when I was diagnosed last year, I cried to God for healing, negotiating, bargaining. But instead, He brought me to the doorsteps of Victory Pasadena. It made me realize that going through my trial brought me closer to God and trusting His plan for me. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. But again, now you see that hindsight. Uh -huh. But yet, it was not there when well, it started. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jane, Jane says we can have joy in trials because it is an opportunity for God to transform and prepare us for his purpose. There you go. Yeah. Preparing us for his purpose. Do you yes. think Abraham saw that, that he will be the father of faith? Mm -hmm. That Joseph saw that at the very beginning. No, he saw that at the very end. All right? Some of you. Le Mami Lita says trials come and go, but as we put our trust in God, it will help us to exercise our faith like a muscle that it may grow stronger every day. Yes, yes. point number two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Christia says we can choose to be like Peter Pan. <laughs> What's a, what is amazing about God, he still honors that and he does not force maturity on us. He waits for us to love him enough to trust what we do not understand and what we cannot see. Peter Pan is, you know, the lost oh, boys. They didn't yeah, grow up. They didn't grow they up. They remain yeah, boys. Yeah, now I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a good analogy. Jackie? Jackie says, healing takes time. There's a reason the Lord waited 22 years to re reunite Joseph and his brothers. The lessons were found in the waiting. Yeah. Wow. And also, not on the waiting, in the perseverance and trusting and all right, Kat. Uh -huh. And then Kat Kaliwag says, 
when we go through trials, we may not understand why we go through it, but we can fully depend on His character, trust His sovereignty and love. Yes. Amen. Because again, yes. perseverance must finish its work. Verse 4. Are you reading what I'm reading? Just put that on the screen. Perseverance must finish its work. So that's why if you don't persevere, the work is not going to be done. The maturing and completely. Most of us, we quit. That's why we start the test again. Because in the middle, when you're about to graduate, that's why, haven't you noticed, when there's about when there's a break that's about to happen, you know, the enemy pour, pours everything on you so that you would quit. So that you will not graduate because the perseverance must must finish its work. That's why when it's finished, then you will mature. Yeah. The working through happens. Yeah. Because so many of us, we did it. It's because we quit. Yeah. Well, in fact, some of some of us, it's just actually the trial and testing is the, the, just the waiting. Yes. It's, not even it's just <laughs> different. Yeah. Sometimes there's no difficulty. The waiting. The waiting is... The waiting <laughs> for a promise yeah. for Abraham. Yeah. So, the waiting for the accomplishment of what? Joseph's dream. Dream, yeah. It's the same, yeah. you know, for Abraham, for Moses. Yeah. I mean, going through the people in the wilderness, come on. 40 years. <laughs> so, yeah. for the Israelites, 40 years in the wilderness. Yeah. That's for Joshua, mm. before being there in the promised land. Yeah. The waiting, the waiting. But what have kept them is what? Disobedience and not trusting God. Mm -hmm. Unbelief in disobedience is what's going to hinder us because the perseverance is not going to finish its work. Finish. Because instead of persevering and trusting, we what? Either we grumble, we complain, we have doubts and unbelief. Mm -hmm. Then you start all over again. Yeah. That's the story of the Israelites. 40, 40 years, years in, the in the desert. Why? Because it didn't finish the work. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Claire Estiller says, In the middle of trials, instead of complain, I will remain. Remain faithful and press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All great right. So, great Thank discussion. Great Too long. In. Uh, yeah. It's 57 minutes off. <laughs> uh -huh. But, but it has great. great comment from everyone. I'm glad you are responding and, you know. Yeah. Engaging, engaging. Very, because we can't see you guys here because there's no camera, right? Uh -huh. I can see all of you, but thank you, thank you, it's great. Yeah. But, so, but this is what it is, and I believe that such a deep yeah. three verses. <laughs> yeah. From the, yeah. as you can see, you know, Pastor Billy, Billy preached a powerful message last Sunday, but yet again, another layer, yeah. another depth yeah. in understanding. So, is it possible to have pure joy in all joy? Yes. When we see this as number one, the proving of our faith, the strengthening, which is the perseverance that God needs to do, the work. And also lastly is that the maturing that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Mm -hmm. So when you go through that, there can be joy now because we understand mm -hmm. what it is all about. Mm -hmm. Instead of grumbling and complaining, just like what you mentioned. Yes, the mm -hmm. I success with a timely word. Yes, it is a very timely word for everyone.